So Sir Keir Starmer has published a very long essay setting out his vision for Britain in the road ahead. The Labour leader has written over 11,000 words explaining what he stands for and the reforms he wants for the country. But what does it all mean? My next guest is Baroness Jenny Chapman. She ran Keir Starmer's leadership campaign and then was his political secretary before joining the Shadow Cabinet. So if anyone can tell us what all of this means, it is Jenny. Lovely to see you again, Jenny. Thank you for, for joining us. Um, it's quite a lot to wade through in this uh, <laughs> pamphlet. Let's, <laughs> let's start with... Um, the role of government is to be a partner to private enterprise, not stifle it. Tell us what, what that might mean. Where that comes from is this year in the summer, Keir spent um, the whole of the summer going and speaking to people in places like Blackpool, Ipswich, talking to people deliberately who are just not Labour voters, who haven't voted Labour for a very long time. And this um, pamphlet that he's written, and honestly, it takes about 20 minutes to read and it is worth it. It's really optimistic, full of hope for the future of the country. I felt really inspired by it. And um, one of the things that's come across is that people think, fairly or not, that the Labour Party isn't on the side of business. And, you know, Keir, his background, his dad worked in a factory for his whole working life. And Keir gets this stuff and he wants the Labour Party to work hand in hand with business. You know, we know we can't succeed as a country with the government against the private sector. You've got to work together. It's about partnership. And that's what he's saying. And on, but seriously, do read it. Give it a read. It's it's a it's a good thing to. It's it's not written in some sort of Westminster speak. It's uh, it's really easy to read and to get your head round. I enjoyed it. Good. Um, another thing: repair the public finances. Now, there are a lot of public spending commitments out there. Uh, not least the recent promise to keep uh, the twenty pounds universal credit uplift. Do you think it's, it's achievable? Do you think, how do you get the public to believe that Labour can be prudent and careful with their money? Well, what Keir says in his um, pamphlet is that we need to treat every penny of taxpayers' money as if it is our own. And I think that is right. What um, we're seeing at the moment is the government is taxing people additionally through the national insurance hike. And that's falling, as we've already talked about on the, the, sort of the shoulders of the people who can afford it least. And they don't know what they're going to be getting for their money. So if you are going to ask people to contribute a little bit more, you need to tell them what they're going to get for it. So Labour and government spent more on the health service. We cut waiting times, stop people dying of heart attacks on waiting lists. Um, and that's what people got for that investment. We need the same kind of approach. In his pamphlet, Keir talks about mental health and saying actually people awaiting, especially young people, are waiting far too long to be assessed and to get the therapies that they need to support them with their mental health problems. This keeps people away from the workplace, it affects their relationships, it's really damaging for society. So let's give the NHS you know, a, a target on that and say we want you to you know, rethink the way that you provide these services to support people who need them. The NHS is more than capable of doing that. It's proved it in the past, but they need a government who's going to work alongside them to achieve it. So it's about real people's issues, things that they need government to work with them to solve. And you know, I think that there's some really good examples in there for the, the sort of difference that a Labour government led by Keir Starmer would make to the country. The party in recent years has been squabbling over its own past rather than focused on the future of the country is one line from the pamphlet. Why does the Labour Party love to squabble so much? And I bet there'll be a fair amount of it next week at conference, won't there? I, I don't know. I, mean, I think, you know, it's because we're passionate and we care an awful lot. And there isn't anybody in the Labour Party, even people that I fundamentally disagree with on certain issues, you know, there isn't anybody that doesn't want to see a better future for the country. And part of it is because we do care. I do think, though, that we have um, been too quick at times um, to disparage some of our achievements of the past. And I think that the Labour government from 97 to 2010 made huge strides, really changed lives, took a, you know, a million children out of poverty, eradicated pensioner poverty, um, transformed the health service, 
close the education gap. Uh, you know, there were, there were some lasting differences that Labour made in government. But, you know, sometimes the last people that you see promoting that and championing that in our communities is the Labour Party itself. And Keir's saying that that needs to change. We need to be proud of our record. And because you, if you're not, you know, if, if, if the Labour Party isn't proud of its own record, why would a voter, you know, trust us with their future, their kids' future, their mortgage, their pension, all those important things that governments have a share and responsibility for? You, you, you know, we have to be proud of what we've done in the past and remind ourselves of those achievements. It never felt like Jeremy Corbyn was that proud of uh, the last Labour government. He rebelled against it when... Uh, uh, during that that Labour government, a lot. Is that Corbyn era over? I mean, in that Jeremy Corbyn is no longer a Labour MP, um, uh, you know, he still has people who who appreciate many of the things that he said. And, you know, you know even someone like me, who is often seen as being at the extreme of the end um, to Jeremy's vision for the country, there are, there's, there's lots of overlapping things. You know, we both care passionately, passionately about eradicating poverty, about equality of opportunity, about Britain doing good in the world. You know, those are things that are shared across the Labour movement. And it's a bit like, you know, Joe Cox said, let's focus on the things that unite us, not those things that divide us. Um, and I think there are many, many things that unite us in the Labour Party. I don't kid myself that the Labour conference this year is going to be a tea party. There are going to be some big rows, but that's what conference is for. It's for doing these internal Labour Party bits of business, as well as, and I think Keir's speech will do this, as well as speaking to the country and saying, here I am, I want to be the Prime Minister. This is why, this is the kind of country that I want to create. Come with me. And, you know, we've got to do both things next week in Brighton. Now, he wants to reduce member say in future Labour leadership elections. Is that going to be voted on next week? Uh, he's having a conversation at the moment um, with senior figures in the party and in the trade union movement to try and see if there's a sort of consensus about how we can move forward on this. You know, for most of the Labour Party's history, these decisions have been made by what we call a kind of electoral college process, where the decision is shared um, across the movement, uh, you know, in the last I think about sort of five six years ago, that did change um, to this sort of one member one vote system, which I supported at the time. I thought that was the right thing to do. And actually, you know, the person who told me that we shouldn't be doing this is Dennis Skinner, uh, and I think you know because he, he said you know you end up with massive entryism, you're going to end up with factionalism dogging the party. And actually, I'm afraid. You know, Dennis was right about that. And I think there is too much factionalism and, and we are far too inward looking or have been as a party. And we need to, to reverse that. You know, we've got to stop talking to ourselves and start treating the public with, you know, more respect and give them a lot more attention. That's what Keir's done over the summer, his work um, up and down the country, talking, listening, understanding has led to the piece that he's written. And then that will inform his speech next week. So it is about sort of changing the mindset really of the party about who, which factions in control to, you know, what we can do, not for ourselves, but what we can do to improve the lives of people across Britain. Jenny, your shadow Brexit minister, something else in the pamphlet uh, that Keir Starmer has said is that he will, I quote, fix the holes in the shoddy Brexit deal. Now, for many low paid workers who have seen their wages go up, there's nothing shoddy about that Brexit deal. It's a roaring success for them. Well, the Brexit deal's not finished. Um, the government doesn't pretend that it is. That's why they've still got um, a minister of the Cabinet Office negotiating with Europe. There are some important things that need to be completed. So we need to get that veterinary agreement so that we can stop um, having conversations about the Northern Ireland Protocol and sausage wars and all of that. The supply chain issues that we've got, the reason, you know, I went to the supermarket last night in Darlington, you know, there's, there's gaps in the shelves. Good much be embarrassed about that. You know, the fact in 21st century Britain, we can't move goods around um, because there's holes in this deal. We've got problems at our borders. You know, all of these things need to be fixed. The creative industries, big part of our economy, they've got real problems. It's going to affect the earning power of our country if we don't affect, if we don't correct these things. So there's, there's still stuff to do. 
but you know we are out of the EU now we're not going back in to the EU we want to make a real success of you know UK PLC so you've got to have you know you've got to have a, a, a completed deal and then you've got to look at um, how you trade around the world and um, so you know there's a lot to be done still with that and I know everyone's just it's one of those conversations that everyone feels is done um, and to the extent that we're out it is but unfortunately there is there's still work to do. Um, a, a personal not personal to you uh, Jenny but but we were elected at the same time, so I know you quite well. We have shared a glass of wine together. Um, you know, you're, you're fun. Now, I Thank don't you. know Keir Starmer that well. Of course, I was a colleague. You know him really well. Why, why do I think he might be a bit boring? Tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you're wrong. No, you are wrong. Um, the difference, I think, between Keir Starmer and Boris Johnson is that Keir Starmer will take the job of being Prime Minister seriously. You know, he does think in the longer term. He isn't thinking, what do I need to say to get through the next news cycle? He's thinking, what's the, the, the best thing for this country? And that does take an element of seriousness. It does. Um, and he has that in a way that Boris Johnson doesn't. So he is fun. Um, and, you know, he has imagination, creativity and a huge passion for the future of the country. But what you're not going to see him ever do, I think, I can put, I'll put a glass of wine on this one with you, Gloria. He will never stand up in New York and make a, state, a, a speech on the world stage with a joke about Permit the Frog. Uh, you know, we, that's, not going to have, that's not going to happen. That won't be the, uh, the Starmer premiership. I think you're right about that. Um, very nicely put.